All right. So I'm happy to announce that the Manios compounding machine has crossed the $1 million threshold. Um, we've been flirting with it for a little while. Um, we were at 976 and 990 and 1.995 and then fell back. Um, so on Friday, June 4th, we, uh, we crossed it. And uh, so, yeah, very, very happy about that. Um, now, in, in capital markets, anything could happen. Um, you know, by June 30th, that, that uh, 1 million and 2,000 or so could be 900,000 or 800,000 or 500,000 if we have a, a, a March of uh, 2020 in, in uh, June of 2021. Hopefully we won't have that. But in financial markets, uh, you just never, never know. Um, but yeah, very, very happy about that. Um, I have the two main accounts. I have basically, I want to say four accounts that comprise the Manios compounding machine. Two of them here are pulled up and I think there's about 970 or so in these two. So this is the TD Ameritrade account here. Um, you can see, look, and this is, I mentioned March, 2020, you can see here. February 2020, 363, all the way down is like 203, if I can get it just right on. Oh, I keep missing it. There we go. March 18th, 203. Now that 203, you can see coming out of a crash, is six, it's showing 608. It's actually, we're like at 616. It's showing 614 here. Um, but that's because it's showing uh, options value. When, when I sell puts, uh, or sell calls, it assigns a monetary value to them, which to me is irrelevant. I never count that monetary value. Um, the reason being is when I sell options, um, I, I don't do it um, in the mindset of a stock trader who's looking to close the position to take a profit. Once I execute that put or call, I'm all in until the expiration, which means I have the cash set aside um, in, in order to satisfy that option. Um, and, and so if I put the shares, I simply, I call it a ping pong strategy. I turn around and sell the call, uh, generally, and then take that other premium. So it's just a play on volatility and I'm taking, you know, um, things where the return is 40%, 60% and spreading my risk across different, um, different options there. Uh, and, uh, it, it's worked out thus far. Um, so, yeah, so you can the, the way to look at it is you can see here, you know, um, basically I take the long stock value and the cash alternative. So if you take 608, 253 and 45 cents plus what is it? 890690. Um, that's 617. See, not 614. Um, again, that's if we scroll down, see that short option value there, 2492.50. Again, I never have, and I would say this almost 100%, will never close a uh, option position. So to me, the value on, on the closing or opening, or excuse me, on the closing is completely irrelevant. So that's 617 there. And if we go over to interactive, you take 356.701. And 15 so that's you can see that's 973 and there's about 28 in the other two accounts so that's a million one um, 86 so yeah so very very happy about that um, you know it's taken it's taken a while here um, to do that but it, you know for the last I would say since 2016 since I sold Brahma Bella Vineyards in the mountains of North Carolina I've really done nothing but studying investing um, through reading, through YouTube videos, um, both in, in real estate and in stock market. Um, so, so very happy. It's a goal. I mean, my, my ultimate goal, I mean, I'd like to get, I'm 41. I'd like to get to um, somewhere between 50 to 100 million. Um, that's kind of my ultimate goal. Will I get there? I, I don't know. Um, but that's kind of what I'm aiming for and towards. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. It was, it was also – Interesting. Um, on the very day when I crossed the million dollars, um, I think she's an English writer. 
used a quotation um, from my novella that was published in 2012 that really encapsulates uh, the idea. Um, the quotation is, my delusions of grandeur are steadily becoming a reality of grandeur. Well, she quotes me here. So it's just interesting that on the very day when I, when I crossed the million dollars, my, my reality of grandeur uh, has, has come to be, so to speak. So that's just a little, little side note. But let's, let's move on from the million dollars and let's go into composer. Um, as many of you know, I'm very, very enthused um, about this company, Invest Composer. Um, last time I mentioned, I, I had done like 20 some um, symphonies. And um, I'm up to 35. And um, so you can see here, this is the trailing 12. Let's go down here. So a cool thing that I did, um, I want to say on Thursday, so it's probably a little bit different today. Um, you can see the annualized returns are the tra trailing 12. You can see up here trailing 12. So if you add all these up here, these these yearly returns, you know, 116, 53, 57, you know, 37, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, right? Um, and then divide by 35, which is those 35 symphonies, which means if I equally weighted, um, let's say, let's say I had 300,000 last, um, June, um, June 4th or June 5th of last year, and I put 300,000 and I spread them across the 35 funds. That would be $8,571 in each of these symphonies. Okay. Um, well, the return when I, when I tallied it up and divided by um, 35 was, a, I'm going to say 72.38. I did this maybe Wednesday or Thursday, so it's probably very close to that. Um, so if you take 300,000 times 72.36%, that's 217,000. So if I put 300,000 last June into these uh, symphonies that I created, they would be worth 517,000 uh, a year later. So, you know, very, very impressive there. Now, look, let me, let me preface this with, um, look, we, we're at the, probably the tail end of a bull market. I mean, to quote the great late Jack Bogle, no one knows nothing uh, with regarding to markets. Turn on Bloomberg or CNBC and, You'll hear someone with a PhD or, you know, a CFA or an MBA, and they'll say, well, you know, our research says the market, you know, okay. So um, very few people can time markets. But Warren Buffett and Jack Bogle said they've never met anyone who could, you know. But, but most people would say that we're at the tail end of, of a bull market. So in a bull market, many people outperform. Everyone's a genius in a bull market. Um and um, so, yeah, so, you know, you know, am I going to get 73 percent return moving forward? Uh, I think I'm good, but I don't think I'm Jim Simmons good uh, at, at, at Rentech, you know, with the type of uh, geniuses that he's assembled there. Um, so so but it's just very interesting to see, um, you know, with Invest Composer, being able to kind of track the annualized, being able to look at the sharp ratios. Um, the standard deviation, standard deviation, max drawdown, um, you know, you can see like this one, 42.2. This one had a drawdown of 51.4, but it's, it's a return of 67.4. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited. Um, the, one of the founders, Benjamin Roller, sent a, an updated message on Invest Composer. Um, and uh, I think they're going to be launching pretty soon with Alpaca, just a single symphony, which a little, little, Frustrating for me because I'm very excited to run multi symphony. Um, you know, there's a great Ray Dalio video. Um, I think it's called the Holy Grail, where he talks about the power of when you can diversify, um, how it how it mitigates risk. So, like I said, I'd love to run all 35 of these strategies with a certain amount of capital um, instead of just be, having to choose one of these. You know, but uh, I think from my understanding, they're going to start with the one in the summer and then towards the end of the summer beginning of the fall um they're going to go multi-symphony so um i've opened my alpaca account um just just waiting um on the go ahead for that and I'll, I'll probably run just a small amount of capital with one symphony you know because i'm not going to run 
uh, a significant amount. Um, but then once they go multi symphony, um, uh, hoping to have, you know, six figures plus, um, in, uh, you know, in, in alpaca there. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, and another thing they added here, which is a cool, so let's go. So let's do this. There's a guy and, and people on seeking alpha said, Oh, you remind me of hedge funding because they read my essay leverage ETFs for the long term. And I never heard of hedge fundy um, before, but I guess he was a, he's like a logger on Bogleheads. And so he did, um, I think it's 5545 U Pro TMF quarterly rebalancing. So if you click on hedge funding, let's see if this works here. Okay. So quarterly rebalancing. Now watch this. So I can go jump to back test. So again, this is like a fusion of portfolio visualizer, kind of meets M1 finance or motif, you know, if you were familiar with that, um, meets Python. That's the way I, I see it. Um, so you can see hedge fund here from, let's see the date, the, uh, the January 4th of 2016 to June 4th of 2021. Um, he has had a 36.2% annualized return, sharp ratio 1.23, standard deviation, max drawdown. So very cool. Now, before, you would only be able to compare it to other benchmarks like SPY, QQQ, DIA, other uh, ETFs. What's cool now is, so Mayan that I wrote about on Seeking Alpha, um, shortly after that essay, leverage ETFs for the long term. And I've been running it actually with, um, I think that's like 143,000 at this point um, with real capital. I'll be running it manually um, right now, but I can take, so it goes your symphonies add. So let's go to my balanced alpha three times leverage and let's add that against it. Cause again, people would message me like, Oh, you remind me of this guy hedge funding. And, and again, I had never seen it. I just, uh, I, I had come across a leverage ETFs. Okay. So let's click on that. There it is. Um, okay. So what's cool is I can put my balanced alpha three times leverage, which like I said, I think I have about 143,000. Um, we can pull that up on the Manios compounding machine and see. So I can compare hedge fundies 5545 with my balanced alpha, which is, which is somewhat similar, um, with the SPY. So we can scroll down here. Um, and this is a new feature being able to compare symphony to symphony, which is great. So my face is in the way here. Let me scroll down. There we go. Okay. So hedge funding, 36.2 return, sharp ratio, standard deviation. You can see mine has outperformed it slightly. Um, but let me say this for those of you who understand compound interest. And in fact, maybe we could we could do this um just to show you people think oh it's like a percentage point or two um but when you do a percentage point or two over a 20 or 30 year time horizon um it's massive so let's assume although i don't think either of these funds will um perform at this level over the long term the back test on a lot of these funds are like 26 28 percent but let's say you put a hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna run it here. It's kind of fun doing the math. A hundred thousand dollars with no addition, and let's do twenty years, and let's do hedge fundies first. Let's do thirty-six point two, and let's do it. that's forty-eight million two hundred fifty-four thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars. So let's say forty-eight point two million. Now let's run it at 38.4. So 48.2 million, 66.4 million. So 66.4, that's 48.2. That's a difference of $18 million over 20 years. I mean, that just shows you that, again, the power of compound interest. And, and, and actually Jack Bogle uses this example to criticize and, and Buffett as well, hedge funds, high fees, because, you know, you're, he talks about you're, you're paying for what you don't get. Few of them outperform the, um, 
the S&P over the long term, yet you're paying fees. And many would argue that the reason you don't outperform is because of the fees. But forget all that. Let's just, you know, back to the point of 36.2 and 38.4. Um, you know, again, it's unlikely that either of these funds will probably do in the mid 20s. But say say one is 26 and one is 28. Well, again, that 2 percent, if you're running with one hundred thousand dollars, is 18 million dollars. So that's a mansion in Palm Beach for your kids. Or yourself or whomever right I mean that's you know or that's uh, you know four Ferraris or whatever you know whatever you want to quantify that 18 million dollars so so it's just cool and now you can you can take it let's see we'll do, let's do something also fun with this so let's now let's see if I can figure this out let's out let's now add another symphony um, this is the other one that I actually run, and this one I had 104,000 running live uh, in interactive. Now this is the all weather alpha three times leverage. Okay, so it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. Is it running? There we go. Yeah, it's going through. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. So now we can scroll down and look at all weather. So you can see that all weather has underperformed both hedge fundy and my balanced alpha. Okay. Um, it's standard deviation is a little lower. Okay. And it's max drawdown is lower. And that's kind of how Ray Dalio created the original all weather that it's a smoother ride, you know, um, you know, your Calmar ratio is, is lower, um, but, um, you know, your max, your, you know, it's only a four, four or 3%, but you're still have less of a max drawdown, still amazing returns. I mean, God, if you, if you compound over the long term with these numbers, it's just astronomical. Again, you saw what a hundred thousand turns into, you know, it's 48 million or, or you know, whatever, um, 56 million, uh, you know, it's, it's massive, massive, massive. So, um, anyway, so that is that, let me just pull this up and just make sure my math. Yeah, it was 66. Yep. So I think it was 48.2 and 66 for the 38.4 and 36.2 edge funny versus balance alpha. Um, let's, while I have it out, let's see the difference on all weather. If we did hundred thousand dollars, 20 years, so balanced alpha is 66. All weather is 31. Wow. So look at that. Over 20 years, the difference on, you know, a couple percentage points. Oh, wait, I did 33.4. It's actually 33.2, so it'd be lower. So 30.9 million. Wow. It's like almost half. So. Just, just having some fun with math there and compound interest. But, yeah, so this is amazing, amazing software. I mean, I, I can't tell you how excited I am for them to go multi-symphony uh, on this. But, um, again, they just added this feature here. And um, so, yeah, you can just have a lot of fun, like, creating strategies and then comparing your strategies. And then so another thing you can do is, like, you can go back. So, okay, this, this right here is going – back to 16 but what if we just wanted to go last three years and instead of going like kind of the five years let's go three years let's see what that does okay so now we can go this is from June 5th 2018 you can see the returns are even even higher here for both um again my balanced alpha has has edged out hedge fundy um and uh, all weather is still done amazing, um, you know. So um, yeah, just just fun, just fun to do the research and back test and play around. So so yeah, so that's Invest Composer. I will uh, let you guys know both on my Seeking Alpha monthly essay and here uh, about that. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So just very happy with crossing the million dollars. Um, and you know, excited to keep on, keep on pushing, trying to get to that, you know, maybe 50 or a hundred million, uh, not, not now, but maybe by the time I'm, you know, 55, 60, 
65, somewhere in there. So uh, happy investing. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Ciao.